Brian Stelter is a media reporter and special correspondent for Vanity Fair. He wrote about the story of Ray Epps in his new book titled Network of Lies, the epic saga of Fox News, Donald Trump, the battle for American democracy. That will be out in November. And he joins me now. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Um, well, Epps, I mean, again, it's, it was never about the actual facts here. But give people a little context. On, I mean, the Epps thing was wild. Like, they went to town on this one guy, and it wasn't just fringe folks. This became a almost canonical story told about January 6th that this one guy's who incited the whole thing. Yes, largely Tucker Carlson, but also others on Fox and others in the House, in the, in the GOP media, you know, maelstrom, including House lawmakers, as you showed there, with Matt Gates and others pushing this. It, it comes from this uh, premise that Tucker Carlson promoted on the night of the riot. He said, this is not your fault, talking to his viewers, this is their fault. He had to come up with a they. Right. He had to figure out who to blame. In order to right. maintain innocence for his fans, he had to point in a different direction. He had to come up with a setup, conspiracy theory. And in order to have a setup, right. you have to have set it up. So he points to Ray Epps. There were videos he points to, distorted videos to say, well, Ray Epps is part of the setup. He's an undercover agent. He's one of the feds. And because there were not charges pressed immediately against Epps, this theory continued to gain so much more attention for weeks and years and months and actually years. He, he is suing now. I mean, and, and, and you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in, in, in the lawsuit. That key there, the, the, the origin of this, yeah. which I think is a key thing to understand, reverse engineering around what needs to be the case to fill the audience demand. Yes, to say right. this is not your fault. Right, because people watch, I think most people, and I think probably most Fox News, I think most Americans watch what happened in January 6th and were horrified by it. Right. They weren't like, hey, that's great. I think most people were like, this is awful. Yeah. So what you have to do is tell them a story about why it wasn't awful in the ways that you might think. That's right. And that's why Ashley Babbitt becomes a martyr. And that's why Donald Trump meets with a family. That's why Ray Epps becomes a villain. And what's so interesting about Epps is that he was actually a victim of Fox. What I mean by that is he says in his lawsuit against Fox, he was a loyalist. He believed Tucker Carlson. He was he a Fox trusted, viewer, like yes. a diehard. And he trusted what they were saying so much so that he bought a plane ticket to Washington and he flew across the country to Washington. So he trusted what Fox was saying. And he's not the only one. There have been other January 6 uh, rioters who have pled guilty, as we expect Epps to do tomorrow, who have said, I trusted Fox until they lied about me. And I think that's such an interesting dynamic to see over and over again. And maybe that's one of the only dynamics that can pull people out of conspiracy thinking. Yeah, they, until they lied about me. It, it's also the case that the sort of motivated reasoning is, again, I, I want to be clear here. Like, there was a whole, like, Melania Trump body double thing that went around the Internet. Oh, for gosh, a while. I remember, remember that. that yeah, right? yeah. And, and to me, the key is, like, it's not that people's desire for this kind of thinking isn't partisan in any way. Like, people have this desire, motivated reasoning, conspiracy mm. thinking, right? The difference is what the leadership does exactly. and what the people with platforms do. And it's like, did I go on the show and say, like, well, check out the Melania body double? No. Like, Absolutely I think it's not. obviously ridiculous. There's standards and there's values. And then there's consequences when those standards are, are, are fallen, fallen down. You know, there is, I will tell you, at least a little bit of embarrassment at Fox about what Tucker Carlson was pushing. In you fact, the, the documentary he did, which this conspiracy theory was at the center of it, actually led to a bunch of contributors to leave, right? right? That's I right. Mean, they were like, "This Quit. is too much." They couldn't take it anymore. So there is a kind of, a, a, you know, that was called Patriot Purge. Right. There's been some purging that's happened. People have purged themselves from that universe because they are embarrassed, uh, but clearly not enough. The problem with conspiracy theories, whether it's this or Fetterman, is that they're self-sealing, and every bit of evidence against them helps to confirm the conspiracy theory. What do we do in that environment? Well, I think what you just did. We ridicule, we make fun of it, because, look, until SNL is back, this is the best comedy show at 30 Rock. Laughing at the, the, the Fetterman body yeah. double stuff is actually one appropriate technique, I think. Um, I want to I wanna just note something, too, because I, this does go back a long way. I mean, obviously, Richard Hofstadter writes the, yeah. you know, paranoid style in, in the in mid-20th century. But here's, I mean, here's a headline from 1995. Just mm. to be clear, this is Newt Gingrich. Gingrich not convinced Foster death was suicide. I mean, you had a prominent member, I think it was, I forget which which House committee it was. I think it was a guy named Dan Burton, if I'm not mistaken, who is like shooting a pumpkin in his backyard mm. to recreate the Vince Foster. So there right, is, right. there is, there has been this strain among the Republican Party for a, for a very long time. But it was through pamphlets and magazines and mailings, right, and postcards. This now, yeah, Fox doesn't exist in '95. And now right. there's a network effect, a network of lies effect, where it can be saturated and thus seems so much more believable. I was talking to internet researchers in Boston today. They say a lot of this is about repetition and saturation. When you hear the same craziness over and over. 
and over again, it gets a lot easier to believe that it's real. And that's what happened against Ray Epps. The Ray Epps theory has spread around the fringes of the far right web, where you see it on 10 different websites, in addition to television, in addition to your favorite congressman. And at that point, then, it can feel so real. It, it reminds me of the old saying about information being fast and cheap, but knowledge being slow and expensive. Yeah. There can be yes. data, little bits of information that can yes. make you feel like something is real, but the actual knowledge takes longer to catch up. And that's true for, by the way, the federal government. The prosecutions of the rioters, the prosecution for January 6th, they're only now catching up to Ray Epps. That's a great point. It's also the case that there is something, you know, titillating, I guess is the word I would use. Like when I, we, we all, I think, are drawn to this idea that there's some secret truth you don't know, right? Yeah, like, right. So when you see the Fetterman screenshot, you're like, wait a second. Like there's some second of like, wait a second, what's going on here, right? This like, here's the real story. It has a kind of attentional pull to it that's very powerful. And I think in a lot of cases, is monetizable, right? Like the people that are oh, totally. better, you know, they're doing it for all sorts of reasons, but one of them is it sells. I saw that recently with Hurricane Lee, which turned out to be a pretty garden variety hurricane. But there were claims on social media this was going to be a, a, a catastrophic event. And those claims made money for the people posting them on X, the right. site formerly known as Twitter. Right. There's absolutely a monetization component of this. But you know who's fighting back really well? John Fetterman. Not just coming on your program, but also on X. He's responding to the trolls. He's on there talking to DeSantis saying, uh, I dress the way you campaign. Right. He's actually speaking in internet language. I think that's one of the best ways to defeat these lies. I should know, just to be clear, I to was one of his body doubles last night. Yes, what are, you, what are you calling them? Fetters? Fetters men is the plural. That's Fetters the plural. men. Brian Stelter, thank you very much. Thanks.